Anti-osteoclast therapy in the treatment of bone mets has also changed in the last few years. Um, for years, we've had pomidronate and zoledronic acid, which we've instituted at the time of diagnosis of bone mets in patients with breast cancer. We've given it monthly. We haven't quite been sure um, at what point maybe patients could go to every three monthly or we could stop entirely. Um, but we've got a new kit on the block. We've got denosumab, which is in the class called rank ligand inhibitors. When head-on compared to zoledronic acid at new diagnosis of bone mets and breast cancer, it was superior in reducing skeletal-related events as well as some other quality-of-life measures. Um, and so in my practice, I will now usually talk about denosumab in the first-line setting, although insurance is not necessarily always approving it. And uh, certainly, if I've started with zoledronic acid, when I'm having real progression in the bones, um, then I will consider switching my patient to denosumab. I don't have to worry about the uh, monitoring the creatinine, it doesn't have the first infusion effect, and it's subcutaneous, which, at least in my institution, I can give on my clinic floor, and I don't have to book a spot up in the infusion room, so there's some convenience. So um, we have a new choice there in the metastatic setting, and we're now working on trials looking at how long we should be giving uh, these drugs monthly. And uh, the Optimize 2 trial is a trial that was looking after a year of monthly dosing, switching to every three month dosing or continuing on annually in patients with bone mets. And that's about to wrap up. And hopefully we'll see some data from this and see if there is benefit to continuing it for another year in patients with bone mets who are doing well, or if it's okay to back off, it might help with the osteonecrosis of the jaw and some other side effects.